Hello everyone and welcome to another Symphony tutorial. Today we will talk about auto gratuities, cover charges and fees. So what is the difference and when do we use them? An automatic gratuity can be used when a particular service charge percentage will be imposed on all checks regardless of number of guests. This can be because of a local government requirement, a business decision or for many other reasons. A cover charge is usually imposed on a table with a large number of guests. For example, the restaurant might decide that an 18% cover charge will be automatically applied for tables of 6 or more. A service fee might be used by establishments that provide services such as in-room dining delivery fees for hotel guests or banquet fees for special catering events. If you are using fees like this, it's a good idea to automate the process as best as you can to avoid confusion and mistakes made by the employees. So now, uh, let's go to EMC and see how we would program these charges. Alright, so here we are in EMC. We're gonna start programming the auto service charge first. The first area where I want to visit is the service charges themselves. Under the configuration tab, I'm gonna go to the sales area and click on service charges. I have some general service charges here at the top and then I have all my gratuities. The auto gratuity that I want to add is the 18% one so I already have one. If you do not, make sure to add the correct gratuity as needed. I'm gonna go ahead and close this tab. And the next tab that I'm gonna visit is under the setup menu and I'm gonna visit tender parameters. Now tender parameters is available at all levels in Symfony. I'm opening up mine at the enterprise level. But let's say for example that you have a restaurant where you do apply the auto gratuity and this auto gratuity does not apply in the bar, make sure you make the change for tender parameters at the restaurant level. Do not make it at the enterprise level. So for me I'm going to apply it everywhere so I'm going to make it here up top. I'm going to open up tender parameters. I'm going to go to the configuration tab and here under automatic service charge I'm going to click the drop down and I'm going to select 18% and save. So now the 18% gratuity is the auto gratuity by default for the entire system. But there are a couple of more options that we need to check to ensure everything works well. And all of these options are in the revenue center parameters. So I'm going to open RVC parameters, which can only be found at the revenue center level under the setup tab, RVC parameters. So here we have an option under the general tab that says number of guests before the auto service charge applies. So we're going to use this for the second one where we enter it for a number of guests so if you have it for all checks make sure this is set as zero and also under the options tab we're gonna look for an option called auto service charge default is off which is option number 10 so you want to make sure that option number 10 is not checked for you because this will turn off the auto service charge even if we added it at the higher level so mine is good so I can go ahead and close this and let's go to a workstation and see if that worked. Alright, so here we are at one of our workstations. I'm going to click a quick update to ensure that everything came through and I'm going to go ahead and sign in. I'm also going to go ahead and begin a fast transaction and I'm just going to enter one guest. I'm going to ring up one Ahituna for our guest and as we can see we have our menu item here, a subtotal of $15 tax of 90 cents and an automatic gratuity of two dollars and 70 cents which is 18 percent of the subtotal so that worked perfectly now let's go ahead and configure a cover charge so here we are back in emc and in order to configure our cover charge we need to go back to our rvc parameters so i'm gonna click on my restaurant go to the setup tab and open rvc parameters now there's two things that I have to do in order to make this automatic service charge for everyone into a cover charge that only applies with six guests or more. First, I'll have to go to the options tab and enable that option number 10 that we were talking about earlier. Now there's two main reasons to enable this option. 
One would be if you would like the servers to manually enter the service charge, but it's already defined. And two, if you would like a threshold of guests until that service charge applies. And if you'd like more information about it, you can right click on the name and you will have more details here. So I'm going to go back to the general tab and I'm going to select the number of guests before the auto service charge applies and I'm going to change it to six, save and go ahead and close revenue center parameters. So let's go back to the workstation and see how it behaves now. Okay, so here we are back at the workstation and I'm gonna click a quick update as always and go ahead and sign in. And I'm gonna follow the same procedure I did last time. I'm gonna begin a fast transaction for one guest and I'm gonna order an Ahitsuna. So if we take a look now, all we have is our subtotal and our tax which is perfect because we only want the automatic gratuity to apply when we have six guests or more. So now I'm going to go ahead and cancel this transaction and begin a new one for six guests. And I'm going to order the same menu item. And now we can see we have our subtotal, the tax and the automatic gratuity came on on its own. It is a good idea to automate this process because it can happen where a server remembers to apply it and then another server does not remember to apply it. And then you're gonna find yourself in a situation where your guests are gonna come once and not pay the automatic gratuity and come another time and they get hit with that automatic gratuity. And I can bet you they will complain about it and ask why they didn't pay it the first time and now you're making them pay it. So save yourself the hassle. If you do have this rule where you apply an automatic gratuity for a table larger than six or eight or whatever your number is, just program it in the system and let the system take care of it. And now let's take a look at how we would program a service fee. Okay, so here is the scenario we find ourselves in. We are a restaurant that is part of a hotel and we offer in-room dining services. Now for guests that request in-room dining, there is a $5 delivery fee, which is kept by the hotel, and the 24% gratuity, which is paid to the in-room dining server. So let's take a look at how we would program that. Let's tackle our gratuity first. So as you saw, I already have a service charge that is 24%. So if you don't have one, just go ahead and copy one of the other ones and change it to 24%. Next we're going to have to make sure that we do have a revenue center for in-room dining. Now, obviously, I don't have in-room dining in our restaurant here, but if you would serve in-room dining, you most definitely would have a revenue center for it. So this would be the situation where we want to change the tender parameter from the regular 18% one, which applies to the regular ones. We would have to create an override here. So I'm going to click create an override and answer yes go to the configuration tab and I'm going to say for the in-room dining revenue center, I want the auto gratuity to be 24%. So I'm going to check that and save it. And I'm going to close this. I'm going to go back to my revenue center parameters. I'm going to change to the number of guests back to zero and I'll have to go back to my options and uncheck box number 10. So that way I know I have an automatic gratuity of 24% that applies to everyone. Now let's take a look at the service fee because this service fee is kept by the restaurant. The best way to add it would be as a menu item. So it does not get mixed in with all the other service charges and gets paid to the server by mistake. So I'm going to go back to the enterprise level where all my menu items are programmed and under the configuration tab, I'm going to open menu item maintenance and I'll click a quick search to populate my database. And I'll add an area here where I'm going to add my service charge. So let's say I'm going to add it at about level 200. So I'm going to copy one of these headers and I'm going to tell it that at position 200, I'm going to enter three stars to identify that this is a header or just two is enough. And I'm going to say these are fees. Then I'm going to click OK. So my header should now be added, which is here. And all I have to do is add the menu item itself. So I'm going to select this menu item number 107, open miscellaneous. And I'm going to click insert. I'm going to use that as a template and I'm going to send to position 201 and I'm going to call this 
delivery fee. So this menu item will appear on the guest checks so they know what it is and what they're paying for. So now let's go to the definition tab and take a look at how it's programmed. So right now it just says open miscellaneous. I'm going to change this and just make it miscellaneous and then click OK. If you want, you can make an entire menu item class from it and then add it there. Now, I do not want it to appear on any screen lookup, so I'm going to change this to zero because I'm going to make the system automatically add it there. And then I'm going to go to the price record and I'm going to say that my delivery fee is $5 since that's what we decided on. So now basically I just have a regular menu item that is priced at $5 and I can go ahead and close menu item maintenance. Now I could leave it like that and I can just put that service charge on a button somewhere and ask the servers to make sure that they always push it when they do a delivery fee. But since we're automating the system, I want to make it so that the system will automatically do it for us. So I'm going to go to page design and I'm going to create a button for it. So I'm going to go to the begin checks page and I'm going to change my aspect ratio to 16 to 9. And what I have here is I have a begin table, begin tab, begin fast transaction, and we also have a begin takeout. So what I can do is I can make all of these buttons a little bit smaller and I'm selecting all of them. And if I hold down control, I will be able to make them smaller all at the same time. And I'm going to shuffle them to the left. Then I'm going to copy one of these buttons and I'm going to paste it in place and just make it a little bit smaller so it fits. And I'm going to say begin IRD and I just named it IRD for in-room dining. So they know that anybody that's going to do an in-room dining check, they're going to push this key and I'm going to change the color slightly and I'm just going to make it this pink color. So it stands out and for the function itself, what I'm going to make it is a macro. So a macro key is basically a combination of functions that get executed all at the same time. So I'm going to select macro and then click OK and then I'm going to click edit macro keys. So now I'm going to click add to add the functions that I want the system to do. So I'm first going to say function begin a check by name and I want them to begin a check by name so they can enter the room number of the guest and also maybe the name of the guest so they can greet them by their first or last name. I'm going to click OK. After that, I'm going to click add again and this is on step two. What I wanted to do is add my menu item. So I'm going to go to menu item and then I'm going to click my little arrow and I'm going to click on delivery fee. And after this step in the macro, what I wanted to do is take me to the next panel page, which is the transaction page. I want to change this here and also in the next page here attached to the button. So after they do push it, they get moved to the transactions area. Now, because I'm using the begin check by name, this means that after the button is pushed, a keyboard will appear that will ask me what is the name and the room number for it. So because that panel will appear, the macro will stop because it's not expecting that. So what we need to do is between step one and two, I'm going to add another one and I'm going to move this up. So I have it at position two. And what I have to enter here is a dialogue wait for input. So there's a specific function here to be entered for each dialogue box that you encounter within a macro. So you, I will enter that because I will have one prompt. So if I take a look at the macro from the beginning, I begin a check by name, then the dialog appears. So the second function waits for the input and I'm going to enter the room number and guest name. Then the third function will add the delivery fee to the check and move me to the transactions page. So macros are a little bit more complicated, but they are also very helpful. So I'm going to close this out, save, and now let's go to the workstation and see if our changes work. All right, so here we are back at the workstation. I'm going to click a quick update, then go ahead and sign in. And as we can see, my begin in-room dining button is here. Now, if you want this button only to appear to the in-room dining revenue center, make sure you program page design only at that revenue center level. 
So I'm going to click the button and then I'm going to enter the room number, which is 109. And then I can enter a slash and I can say Smith for the guest name and I can click OK. So now we've begun the check and we also have the delivery fee here. As you can see, the delivery fee does not charge tax or automatic gratuity, this being a fee. But if I add a menu item, now we can see the tax and the automatic 24% gratuity. And if we keep adding menu items, these will go up. So the system behaves perfectly as expected. The fee is here at the top. It says delivery fee. The guests know what they're paying for. And the 20% gratuity ensures that our servers get paid. Let me know in the comments below which of these service charges, gratuities or fees are you using and how you plan on implementing them in your system. Also let me know if there are any topics in Symfony you would like to see featured in a future video. If you are interested in more Symfony tutorials, we have created an entire platform that will teach you everything you need to know in order to maintain your Oracle Micro Symfony POS system. You can also ask for help from our programming team. You can access everything by visiting simsupport.online. And as a special thank you, I am also including a coupon code for you. You can find all the details in the description below. Leave a like if you found this helpful and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.